And welcome to The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers. Glad you're with us. We're here on another show meeting interesting people and dealing with topical issues. And we have a good friend on hand today. We do indeed. We have Ryan Leonard, the Republican candidate for Attorney General, to come talk to us about what's going on in his life. And I imagine it's pretty busy. Uh, Ryan, very capable a young man who's uh, making a statewide run to be uh, Attorney General. He's going to tell us about it. It's a big state. It's a big state. It's a, it's a big uh, step. I bet Ryan's seen much of it. We'll yeah. talk to Ryan Leonard today on The Verdict. A greener planet, cleaner air, a healthy economy, national security, a smaller deficit and a stronger dollar, green jobs, better jobs, energy independence, warmth and light and transportation. The reasons Chesapeake champions natural gas include your children and grandchildren, your community and its economy, it's schools, roads, and charities. More hope for the future. More confidence in the direction of our nation. The need for energy that's clean, affordable, abundant, and very American. These are the reasons Chesapeake champions natural gas every day. Meyer Eatman Tate. We're accountants. We do taxes, business valuations, estate planning, and consulting. And we're right here in Oklahoma working with the owners of small and medium sized businesses. Steve Wilsey and Stuart Meyer have the resources and the experience. Wilsey Meyer Eatman Tate in Oklahoma City and Tulsa. Back to the verdict, Mick Cornett with Kent Myers. Kent's going to introduce today's guest. Today, we're really pleased to have joining us uh, Ryan Leonard, the Republican candidate for Attorney General. Uh, Ryan is a native of Beaver, Oklahoma, fourth generation native of Beaver, Oklahoma. He did his undergraduate work at Boston College, did his law work at the University of Oklahoma. He's a former uh, uh, state prosecutor. He was senior aide to uh, Senator Don Nichols uh, for a number of years, and now he's in private practice in Oklahoma City and is offering up to you, the citizens of Oklahoma, his candidacy for uh, the attorney general position. Ryan, thanks for joining us. Kent, thank you, and, and Mick, thank you for having me. Great to see you. It's great to be here. Um, tell us about how you got to Boston College, by the way. Uh, <laughs> how did that come about? Uh, all, all the way from Beaver. All the way from uh, Beaver to Boston, yeah. Well, I actually grew up in Beaver and then went to high school in Oklahoma City. Um, I ran track uh, in high school. I was recruited to run at a small school in upstate New York, and I'd flown into Boston on the way, and uh, I, uh, uh, Colgate University in upstate New York was about the same size as Beaver. Uh, I'm a big Revolutionary War period history buff, and I, I, I walked those Boston city streets. I was, I was ready to get out and see the world, and I thought, boy, it would be neat to come to school here. And uh, so I spent uh, three years in Boston, a year uh, at a French university, and uh, uh, was a wonderful experience. I, I would go home uh, at Thanksgiving uh, with friends from Massachusetts mm -hmm. and New Hampshire, and I would be on display as the only person from Oklahoma they had ever met, <laughs> and, uh, and the only one wearing cowboy boots. So it, uh, uh, it was a wonderful experience. It was a great education. I, I got my law degree from, from OU. I, I came home uh, to go to law school. You, you were the person they wrote the song about, about how do you keep them down on the farm once they've seen Paris? 
<laughs> you have to be a certain age to remember that song, and, and the first line particularly. Well, I like the like the lyrics. But it does but I apply. Yeah. It does apply. Well, I, I uh, uh, I'm a proud Oklahoman, and I, and I've been a proud Oklahoman no matter where I've been. I've, I've been home uh, now about 13 years, uh, and uh, um, no, I, I wouldn't live anywhere else other than other than Oklahoma. Well, let's talk about the attorney general's position. What, uh, where, when did your interest begin, and how is that going so far? Well, we're, uh, uh, the campaign is going great. I decided to run in the spring. Uh, Drew Edmondson, our current attorney general, who's been the uh, attorney general for 16 years, uh, made his interest known that he was running for governor. And uh, I, uh, after I came home, I worked as a state prosecutor in, uh, in Canadian County. Actually, during law school, I would go to class in the morning and then prosecute cases in the Oklahoma County District Attorney's Office in the afternoon. And so I've had a long-standing interest in public service, and, and when, when General Edmondson decided uh, uh, not to seek re-election, I started giving it some serious thought. I spent several months in the spring uh, going around the state. I decided uh, uh, that this was a, a way for me to make a positive contribution uh, to the state, and uh, I, I wanted to make sure that I, I wasn't the only one that thought it was a good idea, so I spent several months going around, and uh, the response has been overwhelmingly positive, and we've now spent uh, six months. Um, uh, and have been in all corners of the state. The campaign is going very, very well, and, and I view this as a, as a way to make a positive contribution uh, through public service. Well, now, uh, both you, your family and your wife's family have a legal background. Uh, you, you're well steeped in, uh, in lawyers and the legal tradition, are you not? Well, we, we, when we sit around at Thanksgiving, uh, we're, we're not short on lawyers at the table, <laughs> <laughs> which may be a good or bad thing. But, uh, well, your wife's a lawyer. Uh, my, my wife is a lawyer. Your we, father's a uh, judge lawyer. He, he is. And, and uh, your father-in-law is a lawyer. He is. Both my grandfathers uh, were lawyers uh, and involved in public service. Uh, my great-grandfather was, was as well. My other great-grandfather was a Presbyterian minister uh, who actually went to Beaver uh, in 1903. They needed a, a minister in the, in the territory. And, uh, um, and he went out there as a Presbyterian minister. Uh, but uh, other, other than uh, other than the uh, the clergy uh, in the family, were m <laughs> most most are lawyers. Uh, so, uh, but uh, um, well, when a person runs for office, they bring an entire list of life experiences. What in Ryan Leonard's life experiences make you prepared to to be the state's attorney general? Well, I, I just as a person, I grew up I grew up working on the farm with my my grandfather, and uh, Western Oklahoma is a fabulous place to grow up. I, I grew up listening to the Depression era stories of, of, of my grandfather farming during the dirt storm years, a very uh, industrious, uh, pioneer uh, spirited people. And uh, so I, I, uh, I'm, I'm proud of my, my Western Oklahoma roots, uh, my, my legal experience, mm -hmm. uh, uh, both in the civil uh, side of law. And Kent, you and I know that. We've uh, been, been together and, and, uh, and against uh, on a we case have. or two. Indeed. And, uh, and have had fun. And, and, uh, um, so both with the civil. I wish you'd quit beating me, by the way. <laughs> well, I don't know if that's, that may be too generous. <laughs> but, uh, um, you know, it's important to have experience in the civil background of law and, and on the criminal side as, as, well, as a prosecutor. I'm interested I have both. In, in the farming aspect. What, what were you farming and what, what were you doing when you were rolling up your sleeves and getting after it as a young man? Well, we, were, we were building fence and, and harvesting wheat. The, uh, um, in fact, I, uh, I ran into a state representative from Enid the other day. I was giving a speech there and, and he said, uh, Ryan, I'm John Enns, and his brother uh, used to, uh, he actually bought the farm that my grandfather had had in Meade County, Kansas. And, and uh, we, I said, well, he said he was up there building some fence the other day. And I said, well, the fence that you're replacing was fence that I built. <laughs> and uh, and we, went, we, we went to great pains to make sure that fence was straight. <laughs> and uh, so, uh, you know, I, I learned a lot from my grandfather, uh, very independent, I, maybe a little bit too much uh, at times. Uh, uh, but, uh, um, uh, you know, the, the state's attorney general is the chief law enforcement officer of the state, the chief consumer advocate, and I, I describe the office. I think there's no other office in state government where it's more important to, to show up to work every day and, and do the right thing and, and fight for the people of this state. I believe my, my legal background has prepared me to do that, and, and it's a critically important job, and this is a critically important time. Well, let's, let's talk just a little bit about your, your legal background because I know the um, attorney general has a responsibility for prosecuting criminal cases, which you've done and prosecuting civil cases, which you've done. And uh, you've got your own law firm. Uh, the Attorney General's office is a big law firm. It's, it is. It seems like those qualifications fit nicely to uh, what would be required of you. Well, I think that's, uh, you know, I, I having uh, grown up, uh, my dad and, and, and both my granddads had been small town lawyers, and I spent, uh, when I left the district attorney's office in Canadian County, I, I worked for 
um, several years at a large law firm here uh, in Oklahoma City. I enjoyed that. Great people, great attorneys. Um, I had always been attracted on the, the private side uh, to a, a smaller uh, law practice uh, with that small town background and I uh, started a, a small firm in Bricktown uh, five years ago. I, you know, I was excited about everything going on and, and thanks to, to your efforts, uh, uh, and, uh, uh, you know, there's a lot going on in Oklahoma City and, and uh, so um, it is. It's, it's, uh, it's running a law firm and, uh, you know, both from the, the criminal side and the civil side. So I think, I think it's important to have experience in both. Well, managing a, a uh, office with what are there probably 50, 70 lawyers at the Attorney General's office? That's right. That requires some real people skills and managerial skills. Uh, how does your background fit that requirement? Well, I think uh, I think my background is a you know in effect a small business person, um, which you are when you're running a small law firm. Um, I think it fits fits that to a T. Uh, obviously, we don't uh, have uh, in our small law firm in Bricktown. We don't have 50 lawyers now. I think you'd be You'd be hard pressed to find anybody who who, who may run who, who who would be managing that number of, of attorneys. Um, uh, however, it's uh, you know it's uh, the job of serving as as the state's lawyer is 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 doing what's right, uh, seeking justice, being reasonable, being fair, and uh, uh, and I believe my background that's that's my interest in running. That's that's what I want to do. You know, it seems like we're in an era where we're not necessarily getting along with our neighbors. In other words, we're we're worried about the the water that's coming in from Arkansas. We seem to have some concern that we shouldn't be giving water to Texas, and it, it seems like is the Attorney General's office traditionally uh, looking after Oklahoma's interests in relationships with other states, or is that fairly a, a new phenomenon? No, I think with the water issues is a is a perfect example of that. Um, the uh, I think uh, with what's going on nationally uh, in light of. Uh, 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 pieces of legislation that the current Congress is considering and, and, and the administration is talking about. I think you will, you know, we, we hear a lot about the the Tenth Amendment to the Constitution recently, which talks about the, the those powers that are vested with the federal government are, are, are at the federal level and, and the remainder of the powers are with the state level. I think that you'll see, depending on what comes out of Congress, I think you'll see the attorneys general uh, being very uh, active in, in defending the interests of uh, uh, of the states and making sure that we keep that proper balance between the federal government and the state government. So I think, yes, obviously doing the day-to-day -day work as the state's lawyer, but also uh, protecting the interest vis-a-vis -vis other states and, and, and frankly, uh, and now where we are, I think, you know, protecting the, the, the balance between the federal and the state government. Mm -hmm. you'll, you'll see the attorneys general involved in that. Let me jump in and get us to our first break. Ryan Leonard's our guest. He's running for the state's attorney general post. We'll be right back. that I produce is with colored pencil and watercolor. The subject matter that I use is, of course, Chickasaw. Most of my themes revolve around family and um, really that foundation that has been a part of Chickasaw life since ancient times. The Chickasaw Nation is a matriarchal society. You've got one lady, she's probably the oldest member of the family, that everybody goes to and that everybody reveres. That is something that every woman can look forward to in the Chickasaw Nation because they are extremely important in the family. Maybe one day <laughs> I will be a matriarch. I think this is probably the secret to the success of our government is that we still have maintained that idea that family is the most important thing and that uh, we must uh, minister to the family first and then all other things will fall into place. Home values are down in some states, but not in Oklahoma. Oklahoma's home values have increased 4.2% during the past 12 months. Unlike some states where home values have decreased as much as 20%. Good thing you're in Oklahoma. There may be real estate problems in some states, but there has never been a better time than now to buy or sell a home in Oklahoma. One of the most affordable states in the country, Oklahomans are buying and selling homes every day. And an Oklahoma Realtor can show you how. Good thing you're in Oklahoma. Okiwani is an Indian name for a place where children play. When we obtained the camp, we found a lot of oil debris left in the woods. We saw a commercial about how the oil and natural gas industry cleans up old oil well sites. We called the OERB and they agreed to remove tons of concrete and steel. It didn't cost us a thing. Thousands of children have left their footprints on this land. Thanks to the oil and gas industry, they will for a long time to come.
Welcome back to The Verdict. Kent, where to now? Well, uh, Ryan, the Attorney General has to deal with the legislature and, and of course, the governor's office uh, all the time uh, in carrying out the duties. What experience do you have uh, that would uh, equip you to deal with legislative matters uh, in the Attorney General's position as well as executive uh, branch matters? I spent, uh, uh, Kent, as you re referenced at the beginning of, your, of, of the show, I spent four years uh, working for Senator uh, Don Nichols, former U.S. Senator Don Nichols in Washington in the 90s, which was a, a wonderful experience. I spent uh, many of those days working on the floor of the U.S. Senate, drafting federal legislation, uh, working bills through the process, advoc advocating uh, on behalf of the, the people of Oklahoma on various federal issues. I was in charge of all of the agriculture and transportation, uh, judiciary issues, the appointment of the federal judges and the U.S. attorneys, uh, natural resources, Indian affairs, uh, which the tribal issues, is, uh, you know, I, I know a whole lot more about Indian law than I ever thought I would. <laughs> it's been very valuable in my private law practice and, and frankly uh, uh, with the Attorney General's office, that's also a valuable experience. So. I know uh, uh, I know how to I know how to work with the legislature from my federal experience. I have uh, I have a number of friends in the state legislature here, but mm -hmm. but my my principal legislative experience is is the four years I spent working for Senator Nichols, which was which was a real honor. The uh, um, I was uh, uh, honored to, to play a very small role in helping draft the legislation that uh, created the National Memorial here, and and I spent then spent six years on the board uh, of the Oklahoma City National Memorial, and, and it really was uh, um, got to be involved in a whole host of, of, of very interesting uh, projects that really had a had a you know a pretty broad scope and a pretty broad reach. It was a real real honor to uh, um, to work for Senator Nichols. He's a wonderful man. You know, a lot of elected positions, uh, mayor, governor, president, legislator, senator. There's a combination of proactivity, and these are things that I would like to accomplish if elected. And then there's a, a reactive point. You know, things come up, and you have to react to them. From an attorney general standpoint, are there things that you proactively would like to pursue, or is the attorney general's position one in which you react to events that that come to your office and, and act accordingly? How, how do you view that? Part of the job, of, as as you both know, part of the job of any attorney, whether you're uh, representing a private party or whether you're representing the state, is reacting to problems and solving problems, resolving problems. It's one of the things I enjoy about practicing law is solving problems. Uh, Proactively, uh, we, we face uh, a number of critical issues that the Attorney General will be involved in. Our, our methamphetamine problem is a, is a tremendous problem in this state. It's a scourge. It destroys lives. I saw it every day in the, in the prosecutor's office. We, we in Oklahoma, our, our usage rate is 42 percent above the national average. Uh, in 2004, the legislature took the step of move, moving pseudoephedrine sales behind the counter which after that the, the, the meth lab arrests uh, dropped 95 percent. We thought we'd really made a dent in the problem. Now the, the criminals are uh, always being creative, are, are, are finding new and, and simpler ways to cook methamphetamine. Uh, the uh, Mexican drug cartels uh, through a sophisticated distribution network have, have replaced a lot of the homegrown manufacture of, manufacture of methamphetamine that we have and through, through the multi-county grand jury I think there is a real role for the Attorney General to proactively play. Uh, in the uh, in combating the meth issue, I, I uh, helped uh, uh, Wes Lane and, and, and First Lady Kim Henry this past year. I know you were very active mm -hmm. in that with the Crystal Darkness effort, and uh, played a small role. I think that that uh, when it comes to methamphetamine, it's uh, once you get on it, it's hard to get off of it, and, and prevention is is key. Uh, we're certainly the the uh, a very positive first step, and so um, um, uh, the meth issue, public corruption, just in the last. Three months, we've had we've had three state agencies have you know, upwards of two million dollars embezzled um, from the from the public coffers, and I think there has to be a greater accountability from from a business standpoint. I, I, I'm a I, I believe we want to create business opportunities in this state, and I believe it's the the job of the attorney general to promote certainty and consistency in the law, where we can uh, foster our existing businesses, but also attract businesses. I, I think that this is a time of, of real opportunity for Oklahoma. Uh, so I think on a whole host of levels, they're, they're both the proactive things that the Attorney General could and should be involved in as the state's attorney and also reactive um, on things such as defending the suit and lawsuits and, and, and generally um, performing the functions of, of the state's attorney. What are you doing to get the citizens uh, statewide to know you? What kind of uh, uh 
efforts are you making to get get around the state? Well, we're, we're making a lot of efforts. We're covering a lot of ground. <laughs> the uh, uh, as we were talking at the break, it's not a small state, uh, <laughs> and uh, uh, particularly when you're. Uh, in fact, uh, this week we're we're announcing a 77 county tour um, uh, that we will do over the next several months. And and uh, you know I've I've obviously grew up and spent a lot of time in western Oklahoma. We've 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 already been to all corners of the state, and so you know we're putting a. A lot of miles on the car, uh, obviously uh, um, meeting as many folks as, uh, as we can, uh, talking uh, to, to, to people, listening to their concerns. It's, you know, I, my interest is, is, is public service, being a, uh, in a position to, to make a positive contribution uh, to the state. Um, from the campaign standpoint, I, I really enjoy uh, getting to know uh, the people around the state from, from all, all walks of life and various backgrounds. And, and uh, as anybody who is, uh, and Mick, as you know, anybody who runs for office, it's like you get a, a job interview with, with uh, you know, we're with everybody in the state in this instance. And that's, uh, you know, in small groups, one-on-one, small groups, big groups, it's, uh, you know, the campaigning is, is, is a lot of fun. Um, we're being very, very well received uh, all over the state. And so, uh, uh, you know, we live in a very diverse uh, and wonderful state. I, I you know, ha having spent, a few years elsewhere, I, I uh, and having been home for a long time, I wouldn't live anywhere else. I mm -hmm. think we have, uh, I think we have, the best thing going in the country. Uh, I, we've got three. My wife Carrie and I have three young children, and uh, um, I'm excited to be here and and, 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 and and wouldn't live anywhere else. We got about a minute, minute and a half left. Why don't you just give you this opportunity to either look in the camera or look at us and, and tell the people of Oklahoma why they should vote for Ryan Leonard or consider your candidacy in 2010? Well, Mick, I. I uh, um, as I said earlier, my my uh, uh, my interest in this job is the um, is the public service. Uh, as I, there's there's no job where it's where it's more important uh, to show up every day at the office and and do the right thing, uh, be reasonable, uh, be fair, uh, make sure that the uh, laws are are enforced uh, equitably and justly, and that's my interest in running, and that's my pledge to the people of this state, and that's exactly what I'll do. All right. Well, Ryan, thanks very much for coming on The Verdict. We appreciate it. I hope the audience appreciated the opportunity to get to know you a little better. Well, Mick, I, and Kent, I really appreciate the opportunity to be here. <laughs> Glad I, to have you. You'll probably be eating a, a lot of uh, fresh fruits and vegetables all across the state of Oklahoma <laughs> at harvest time in the back of pickup. So we, we, I, I sure hope so. Okay. We, we, we will be. <laughs> and I want to check out the fence line, see just how straight that fence line was that you, you created. Well, that was about 25 years ago. <laughs> the, uh, uh, I, I, I bet it's still pretty straight, though. <laughs> Ryan Leonard, today's guest. He's running for the state's attorney general position. Kent and I'll be back with a final word right after this. It's time to meet the new people in power. The people responsible for our energy future. It's you. It's me. All of us together. From now on, we're, we're the, the people, people in power. power. OGE will supply the power. It's how we apply the power that counts. We've got to use electricity smarter, wiser, cleaner, better. So we've got to be informed, equipped, prepared, committed. From now on, look, nobody wants to waste energy. Nobody wants to build new power plants. Nobody wants to pay more for electricity. But nobody wants to give up their way of life. We don't have to. If we just use positive energy together. I'll take advantage of off-peak hours. That means cutting energy use from 1 to 7 every day. Every day. I'm going to sign up for more and more wind power. We'll take advantage of the high-tech tools coming soon from OG&E. OG&E can't do it alone. It's you and OG&E working together. Find dozens of ways you can help at OGE.com. A positive energy future is in our power together. naturally to Tulsa, where nature's beauty is matched with an eye for aesthetics. A legacy of neighborhoods graced with lawns and landscaping and handsome homes. A place that seems to have patented an ideal lifestyle. Bank First is loyal to the quality of life Tulsa assures its citizens. 
to the priority placed on education, culture, and growth. Loyal to builders who transform raw land into residential charm. Developers who see opportunity and add vitality to Tulsa's economy. Bank First serves both enterprise and private lives that need a loyal partner. It's how we help nurture this city's very good life. Bank First. Loyal to Oklahoma. Loyal to you. The Journal Record is pleased to be a sponsor of The Verdict. The Journal Record. Since 1903, the best source of Oklahoma business news and legal information. And for almost 30 years, Oklahoma political government and business leaders have turned to the McCarville Report for accurate, reliable, inside information. Visit the McCarville Report online. Brian Leonard is an energetic young man, and you will need to be if you want to run in all 77 counties of this state. Well, indeed, and if you want to take on that job of a state attorney general, it's, it's a myriad of uh, responsibilities with both criminal and civil responsibility, uh, responsibility for the citizens of Oklahoma at the regulatory agencies as, a, as representing the citizens, for instance, in front of the Corporation Commission, uh, interacting with the legislature on uh, whether legislation is good or bad, ought to be passed or not, and perhaps just as important as anything is the writing of the issuance of attorney general's opinions, mm -hmm. which uh, the uh, state relies on as being the law until some court tells us differently. So uh, the, uh, the job of the attorney general is just uh, uh, complex indeed, and it needs a certain kind of person to do it and do it well. You know, what I try to draw out of potential candidates is, first of all, are, are they grounded? Can they, can they yeah. communicate to us how, how grounded are they as a person? And then, what's their life experiences that, yeah. that either make them appropriate for this job or inappropriate for this job? And boy, Ryan has a variety of life experiences that we just tend to make you just the perfect person for really a lot of endeavors, and, and this being one of them. Well, he does. He's got a wonderful family that he pays uh, very close attention to and, uh, and takes really uh, uh, good care of those kids along with his wife, Carrie. And, uh, there, he just comes from a wonderful background. Well, we have some website information, and uh, we try to give candidate information where we can, so you can get more information. Ryan Leonard, 2010.com, and also our website where you can go and tell us about a guest you'd like to see on an upcoming edition of this show, The Verdict. For Kent, I'm Mick. We'll see you next week on The Verdict. The preceding program was produced exclusively for the Cox Channel.